estuvo lleno el auditorio para ver a los lupeños y yo me llevé la sorpresa de mi vida porque no habían hecho lo, lo que Samas había empezado con los corridos mexicanos. Ellos habían ido más, ellos habían agregado este, el drama dentro del espectáculo. Entonces, eso ya fue un coreodrama con una seriedad y con un, con un estudio de fondo, con una investigación de fondo que a mí me hizo reflexionar. For the founders of Los Lupeños, Ramón Morones and Susie Cashin, the main goal was to train a company of dancers who could represent the brilliance of Mexican dance and share that gift with the rest of the community. I had ideas of doing it in a big way. I wanted to make art. I wanted to do new things. I wanted to take what I'd seen in Mexico that I thought worked. And then I wanted to do other, other ideas. She is so positive and so energetic, and she has such a love of the culture and the art form that uh, I, I feel very uh, pleased that she's someone that I've known in my life and that my children have known. And the other person that comes to mind is Ramon Morones. Uh, he was also a real positive part of that whole relationship we have with Los Supremos. They put it out on all the radio stations and they said, if, if you want to learn Mexican dance, come at this Saturday, like at 10 o'clock on a Saturday, and they got, um, um, I think like a cabaret nightclub dance hall. Mm -hmm. And because we walk in it's Saturday morning after Friday night, the, the place smells like beer. <laughs> you know, it's, you smell of liquor everywhere. And here are these mothers with their little you know, eight-year-old, ten-year-old kids coming in. And there were about 60 people. Mm -hmm. And I think what was wonderful was it was all ages. Yeah, we started, we started from scratch, right from the beginning, zapateado. Somehow, <laughs> <laughs> a sturdy group of people, you know, stuck it out and became the, the first performing <clears throat> ensemble. Well, Susie had me, um, start teaching at 15. She had me do her class at San Jose City College. And so right away, uh, teaching became part of my experience with Folklorico. And it, it, it remained uh, for, for till I retired. I really enjoy practicing uh, because I can actually appreciate how long I've actually worked to be able to do it right. Uh, but performing is also really fun because it feels like I'm sharing something with the audience. Um, for me, it's about, I mean, I do folklorico to represent my culture. You know, showing others what the Mexican culture is about. And when we were on stage doing the final dance of Zapateado with three generations of dancers, I felt like Susie and Ramon were up in the balcony, just cheering us on and just so proud of what they had started. And I just felt really proud and humbled to be a part of this legacy and that I'm just a link in a very long chain and hope that there will be many, many more beyond me who will continue to be a part of this immense, amazing legacy. Representing our right to, to be here, to exist here. This is our culture and our culture belongs here. It, it's, it's a reminder that we, there's value in our culture, in, in our history, in our ancestors. It's a positive image of the Mexican American community. I just think it's really important for people to see Mexican Americans in different aspects and in the arts. Why? Yeah, I think Why do you think it's I I think I think in general like you know dancing folklorico in California means so much uh, for the community at large. I think it's I think it's a voice for 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 the Mexican community and the Latino community in general, you know, as a way to say, you know, we belong here. You know, this is this is our space. This is this is our home. 
our music fills the air of you know San Jose, our, our, our dances, you know, our, our, our costumes, you know, they're, they're filling the space for everywhere we are.